Welcome everyone. Welcome to our Launch Hub AMA session. Hey Jess, how are you going? Nice to see you. Good. Nice. We've just got a few more people coming in and we'll get started. Awesome. So welcome everyone. Um, my name is Paz Pazarski and today I'll be running our Launch Hub AMA session, which we're really, really excited about. And we will be recording this session for those who couldn't make it in um, to the live session. And we'll be sending the recording to those who have registered. So before we uh, dive in today, I just wanted to start with an acknowledgement of country and acknowledge the traditional owners of the land in which we meet on uh, at RMIT University. So at RMIT University, we are the land on the, of the Woiwurrung and Boonwurrung language groups of the Eastern Kulin Nations. And it's really beautiful that we can still connect regardless of where we are, whether you're based in um, Australia or overseas at the moment. and I'm actually, uh, yeah, based in Torquay at the moment. So I wanted to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land here as well. And so today I uh, would like to share today's purpose and a bit of an overview of what we're going to cover. Um, so really the purpose of today is to share more about our 10th Launch Hub program and dive into the application process as well. And if you have any questions, we'll go uh, to the very end and go into a Q&A. So we'll be able to dive into, yeah, exactly what you wanna hear about. And so we'll also be hearing from a Launch Hub alumni as well, Haddon Dixon, who'll be joining us at one o'clock. So a bit more about how it's going to work. Um, we'll be doing a, a run through of the Launch Hub program. So I'll, I'll do a deep dive in what it entails, what's involved and, and who we're looking for. And then I'll go through the application process and then we'll hear from Haddon Dixon, who's the founder of Aircart, and he went through our seventh launch hub program last year online. And then we'll leave a fair chunk of time at the end for a Q&A where we can, yeah, just go through anything that we might have missed. So get a thumbs up if that sounds good. Good. At, yeah. Awesome, great. And sadly, Kaya, the uh, lead coach, couldn't make it today. She's just feeling unwell. So just be myself from the Activator team. So a bit about me, if I haven't met you already. Um, my name is Paz Pazarski and I'm the community coordinator at RMIT Activator. And I'll be leading our 10th Launch Hub program this year. And so I've been with Activator for three years and have uh, now been responsible for managing our startup community. We have over 350 members, which is super exciting, and a mentor network of over 63 uh, members as well. Um, alongside my nine to five, I'm also a sound composer of relaxation music. So I know exactly what it's like to build a personal brand, put something out there and um, yeah, really be an entrepreneur in that space. So uh, I think coming into Activator and being able to support many founders has been a really rewarding experience. And yeah, that's definitely what we aim to do during Launch Hub as well. So our 10th Launch Hub program, this is a really exciting uh, time for us. And this is the first time we'll be running a Launch Hub program in a hybrid manner. So I'll explain what that online in-person element looks like. Um, but for our 10th Launch Hub program, we're really keen to support uh, social impact led startups. And I'll dive into a little bit about what that, what that looks like. But really the purpose of the Launch Hub program is to support a cohort of early stage founders who are working on social impact startups to really get them ready to achieve product market fit. And the way we do that is by providing our free 12 week program that wraps founders in support through coaching, weekly standups, uh, growth sessions, which I'll explain a bit more about, and funding as well. Uh, but really Launch Hub is about joining a community for life. It's so hard to, you know, venture out on your own and, and pioneer a new business. So we really want to connect you with like-minded founders who are in the same, uh, you know, sphere as you and as well with expert, experts and mentors who can help you on your way. 
who are we looking for? So we are really looking for early stage founders. So what that means is uh, you've done a lot of the, the research and validation and you are now working on your MVP or like a minimum viable product and are now looking to grow and go to market. And of course, you know, that's the ideal stage and you could be a bit before, a bit after. And, and really what we say is um, if you're, yeah, if you're around that stage, apply and, um, you know, we'll be reading all the applications. And if Launch Hub isn't for you, we have other programs and pathways that we can recommend as well. So if you're not too sure, may as well apply and we can, um, you know, actually read and find out what stage you're at to best support you. In regards to the social impact theme, um, we're really looking for businesses that are driving positive change in the world. So we've kept it quite broad, but what that could look like, it could be a sustainable fashion brand, it could be a new tech platform, it could be in the ag agricultural space, and really looking at those pillars of environmental change, social change, um, and, and as well, looking at um, how you use and leverage technology and global connectedness to really have an impact. So yeah, how are you using um, technology to really drive that change? We're also keeping a keen eye out for any um, cybersecurity startups and um, people using technology for good as well. So why startups choose Launch Hub? So we run weekly accountability sessions. And so every Monday from 10 a.m. to 11.30 a.m., we have our stand-up, which is run by our program lead coach, Kaya. And so the purpose of these weekly stand-ups is really to keep you accountable on your goals. Over 12 weeks, you meet with the whole cohort and um, myself and Kaya to really check in on, you know, what's been working, what hasn't been working, what do you need help with and what's your key focus for the week. Um, it's really easy to get bogged down in all the to-do lists and all the things that we know we need to do, but this is really about action. And also leveraging, you know, the wealth of knowledge in um, of, the, of the cohort as well. That's a really beautiful thing we've seen, um, just how close founders get through the 12 weeks um, is really, yeah, it's, it's really impactful. Each week you'll get a 45 minute session with your dedicated coach. So we have three coaches who I'll, I'll speak a bit more about, um, Shamila, Darren and Ian um, were involved in our last program and a few other programs before. So we're excited to have them on, bo on board again. And so how it works is you come into the program, uh, you'll meet the coaches and then you'll put in some preferences of who you'd like to be working with. And then the coaches also um, shed light on who they think they can best support. And then we do some matchmaking. And so we allocate um, like three or four teams per coach. So you get uh, your assigned coach and then you get to meet with them once a week for 12 weeks. And we're also looking at, um, you know, if you know, you really need to speak to Darren about something else, what that could look like as well. But the reason we do a dedicated coach is because then you get one person really understanding your goals, what your business and startup is aiming to achieve, and then can really help you stay accountable um, throughout that, that 12 weeks and build a really solid relationship as well. There's exclusive startup deals with AWS, Google Stripe, and Airwallex. These are, these are credits um, that, we, that we offer. Um, and you get access to our supportive startup community. So it's not just the Launch Hub cohort, uh, but you also get access and a free membership to Activator Connect, which is uh, access to our broader founder community where, where all our Launch Hub alumni are, and uh, you can access extra optional community events as well. Um, you will get to access industry connections um, through introductions as well, and also every Tuesday we'll be running our growth sessions. So a growth session is uh, every Tuesday from 10 to 11.30 over the 12 weeks. And really the, the purpose of the growth session is to bring in industry connections and, and startup experts to deliver their knowledge on a particular topic. So each week we'll have a different topic such as um, value proposition design, customer insights, uh, pitching, funding, 
and um, IP legal. So we cover the key topics of what we think um, will really grow and help your business and then uh, bring in the best experts to deliver those growth sessions. Uh, you'll also get 50 points towards um, Isaac as well, which is really great for tax incentives. So that's kind of the Launch Hub program elements. Um, now I'd really just like to dive into a bit about the Launch Hub team. So as I mentioned, Kaya is the lead program coach. Uh, she ran our last Launch Hub program completely online last year and has also um, started her own business that's just been acquired as well. So she's got really deep expert um, startup knowledge, especially in the tech cybersecurity space. Um, Juan is a program facilitator. So he um, has had a lot of experience around Australia in um, different startup communities and he'll be helping um, facilitate the growth sessions and stand-ups. Um, myself, uh, who's really, yeah, looking at delivering the program and, and the setup and I'll be popping in and out of um, the sessions as well. And then we have Darren who is the founder of the Common Purpose Collective. And Darren has been, yeah, a really good friend of Activator for a very long time. And he's been one of our program coaches in the past three programs and really specializes in founder well-being, goal setting, looking at that value proposition. Um, and yeah, and is very fun, bubbly guy as well. Uh, Shamila is the CEO and founder of Her Wit. So she's really passionate about supporting female founders as well. Um, and also has looked at, yeah, the gamification space um, in game design as well. And then Ian is the vice president of Circular Economy Victoria. And so he's really passionate about this social impact space, about circular economy and, um, and really building impactful businesses. So just a bit of a dream team who can, yeah, really support you through the program. We also have two program partners involved. So has anyone heard of Luna or um, Circular Economy Victoria? A few people. Also, well, if you haven't, uh, Luna is a Melbourne-based um, startup studio. So they help with legal accounting and finance. So we've really partnered with them on the program to really help uh, prepare the founders with the accounting and the, and the financial side, so P&Ls, um, financial forecasting, and uh, they've got an office based in, um, in Melbourne as well. So they'll be delivering a growth session on financial planning. And then we also have um, the opportunity for the cohort to have a one-on-one -on -one with Luna to really dig into the finances, because uh, that's always a sticking point. And then, yeah, we've partnered with Circular Economy Victoria to have really that social impact lens. And so um, Ian will be, yeah, with us through the assessment process and also as a coach and really looking at, yeah, how we're driving positive social change. Funding. So when you get accepted into Launch Hub, when and if uh, you get accepted into Launch Hub, there is an opportunity to pitch for a 2.5k grant during the program and we have an activated capital fund board uh, which is made up of seven members uh, through their connections through RMIT and, and outside as well who help uh, decide who is eligible for funding and this is really depending on yeah the stage that you're at how you would use the money and so uh, this this time is the first time we're doing a grant previously it was a loan and then once the Launch Hub program ends as well, there's a second opportunity to apply for further competitive funding, which will be um, a, a pitch in front of the Activator Capital Forward for uh, a larger amount. So if, if there are particular questions about the funding, um, maybe just write down, write down some notes or some questions, pop them in the chat, and we can go through um, them during the Q&A as well. So feel free to yeah, post in the chat whenever and we can um, come to those at the end. Awesome. I'd really wanted to emphasize, yeah, that when you join Launch Hub, you're not just joining the cohort of nine to 10 founders, you're also joining a community for life and 
Activator is, is, has, is, has is existed for four years now. And we really aim to bring together passionate problem solvers who are really looking to change the world and support each other. So Tom McCall up here on the left is a Launch Hub alumni, um, the founder of Hospo Hire, and he's now based in Sydney. And this is, um, I've completely blanked, um, the founder of Voop Global. Um, and, oh, Kristen is the founder of Voop Global and she ran a pilot with Uber for her um, for her found for her company when she was in our launcher program. So I'm now going to go through a few other um, parts of our co-working space and then chat a bit more about some examples of some launch hub alumni before we hear from Haddon as well. So I, I want to just chat about the hybrid nature of the program and then our how our co-working space ties into that. So for a bit of context, the first seven Launch Hub programs we ran were all in person based in Melbourne at our co-working space in the CBD. So it's uh, just near Melbourne Central Station on Victoria Street. And so we've got this yeah, beautiful building. There's three levels. Uh, I know a few of you have been there, which is great. Um, but if you haven't, yeah, the, our co-working space is really there to support our members to have a really productive um, environment to work on the business. We've had people working full time, running their business out of there. And then we've also had people pop in and out for a day and hot desk or use meeting rooms and grab a coffee as well. So when um, about March last year, obviously transitioning to online, we ran our Launch Hub number eight and number nine program completely online. So we ran them completely on Zoom. And uh, now we're looking at a more hybrid delivery. So as things open up, this program wanted to pick the best elements of the online nature and then the best elements of what you get in person. So the 12 week program, which kicks off May 10th, will have 90% um, online delivery for accessibility and then 10% in person. So weeks four and eight will be in person. So you must, yeah. So, you, you know, you've got to come into the activator space and this is a really great opportunity to meet the cohort in person and the coaches and we'll run our Monday stand-ups in person and the Tuesday growth session in person from Melbourne as well. So for the, and then for the weeks outside of week four and eight um, will be run online. So you can be based anywhere uh, during the online elements, as long as you're, of course, attending to the Zoom sessions live. And then for the weeks four and eight in person, it's at um, our co-working space in Melbourne. And so uh, we'll also be running in week one and week 12, an optional, uh, like wel a welcome drinks in week one um, in Melbourne to catch up with the cohort and the coaches and, and the Activator team. Um, to socialize and then in week 12 a celebration as well and um, the um, the showcase for launch hub um, will be at the end of July in um, week 12 as well so that's kind of like the online hybrid nature and um, lastly I'll speak about um, just a few stories as well so uh, we have uh, a few Launch Hub alumni that I wanted to go through and then I know um, we'll chat about the application process and then um, I can see Haddon's just joined as well. Hey Haddon, we'll, um, we'll throw over to Haddon um, after this as well. Cool, so I wanted to share a few actual stories of founders who've gone through the program in the past. Uh, and just to keep in mind, this is the first program for the 10th one that's a social impact focus. Um, launch Hub number nine was focusing on female founders and circular economy, but before that it was agnostic. So Tim Ottaway is a RMIT alumni of the industrial design and he created Project Flock, which is a bike light that uses biomotion sensors to light up the, the legs of a cyclist to have them um, be more seen and more safe. So he went through our Launch Hub program last year 
and then won the James Dyson Award for um, for design and yeah has now since been a Launch Hub alumni and has come back and um, popped into events as well so the next person I wanted to share was um, Rihanna Knight who is the founder of Team Timbuktu. Rihanna came through our Launch Hub program um, in person and she created a sustainable fashion brand that uses recycled plastic bottles to create like an active fitness brand. So she's since, um, yeah, she's also gone on to join the MAP program um, as well, which is awesome. And then Grav. So Grav is the founder of Book and Artist, also an RMIT alumni, and he created Book and Artist and then came through Launch Hub last year um, and or the year before and really book an artist exists to find any mural artists so if you've got a wall or a space that needs a mural painted uh, you can go on to the platform to be connected with artists so we even commissioned uh, a mural in activator so when the co-working space reopens um, there's a there's a big mural there and then this thank you on the slide here was for, the, uh, for a hospital in Melbourne and which paid tribute to the frontline workers. But yeah, he's since joined Scalada, which is a follow-on program um, and had murals commissioned for Netflix as well, which is, which is super inspiring. So this is the um, last couple of slides before I hand over to Haddon to share a bit more about his experience, but we'll go into the application process and some key dates. So for the application process, um, we have applications open at the moment and they are due on the 11th of April at 11.59 p.m. So once you submit your written application, our team uh, reviews the written applications. We also review them on a rolling basis. So if you've already submitted, so we've had some already submitted and we've already been reviewing. And then if you're successful through to round two, uh, there is a video round. So you create a three minute video that includes um, an elevator pitch and then the reasons why you wanna join the Launch Hub program. It's great if you can have everyone in the team involved, but if not, um, we understand as well. And that's due the Sunday 18th of April. But if you get them in before that deadline, um, we review them, as I said, on a rolling basis. Monday 3rd and Tuesday 4th of May, we have um, panel interviews with myself, lead coach Kaya and coach, um, and also other members of the Activator team. And really these will be 30 minute interviews. Um, these will be held at Activator in Melbourne in person, if you can make it in person. But if you can't, we'll also have an online option as well for the interview. And then the final outcomes will be announced um, the Wednesday and then the program will kick off the following week on the Monday 10th. So yeah, and then it runs for the 12 weeks and ends on Friday 30th of July. So that uh, they are the key dates um, and the application process. And as I said, if um, Launch Hub is not, if you're not successful for Launch Hub for this 10th program, we um, do read all applications and provide, um, you know, alternatives where we can as well. So now I would like to just pause there and um, I've just, yeah, shared a lot about the program and the application process. And so uh, now I would like to introduce Haddon um, for him to share a bit more about, yeah, also just air carts and a bit of an introduction and his launch hub experience as well and yeah Haddon if you want to chat about yeah what you learned and um, what you gained from the program as well feel free to dive into that but I would like to hand over to you now just to share a bit more about your program experience so over to you. Cool uh, thanks Paz thanks for the um, little invite to join you guys it's great to great to be back with you Hope everything's going very well for you. Um, so yeah, a bit of uh, background about me. So yeah, my name's Haddon. Um, I'm the founder of Aircart and a Launch Hub participant slash graduate. Um, for those who don't know, Aircart is an on-demand grocery delivery platform, bringing fresh groceries, different essentials from local stores in as little as an hour through a community of what we call personal shoppers. 
Um, the the connection that I've got to RMIT or RMIT Launch Hub is that I graduated uh, just in uh, July. Uh, I completed my studies major uh, doing a business majoring in logistics and supply chain. So that's that's a connection. Um, the reason the reason why I got in got into Launch Hub um, or got involved with it was because first of all it was an available resource to me um, at the specific time that I got involved with it or got accepted into it. Um, I was sort of doing just a couple subjects at uni, so it fitted in quite well with my um, with my timetable and my sort of work commitments outside of um, outside of uni. So. First of all, it was just a resource that was there. I'd learned about it because um, I also did some entrepreneurship subjects and it was uh, something that I'd been alerted to that it was an available resource. So it wasn't too much of a difficult decision uh, to actually decide to apply. Um, one thing that not many people know, and I'm not even sure that Paz knows this, but um, I actually applied, I think twice before they actually finally let me in. <laughs> I had to keep on banging on the door uh, until they finally let me in. So just a word of warning, if um, you find that um, uh, the Launch Hub program isn't quite suitable to you just yet, don't stress, don't worry about that. If you really want to be involved, you'll keep applying, you'll eventually get in because they'll feel pity for you <laughs> like they did with me. Um, so in terms of the actual experience itself, um, yeah, it's a very valuable thing to go through. It's quite rare that you come across a group of people that are so willing and so keen to help you out in any way they can as you go through your startup journey. Um, so they're really quite insightful people that you're dealing with as well. Those coaches, I was specifically, um, my coach was uh, Ian Wong. Um, I'm not sure if he's still part of the program, but um, he is, yeah, Paz not, Paz is nodding. Um, so he's, he's a ripper um, and he's just one of many that are available to you. Just because you're assigned a coach in the launch up program doesn't mean you're stuck with that coach. You can obviously keep contacting and speaking with other coaches. One thing that I learned throughout the program was um, each of them sort of tended to uh, specialise in different areas. Like uh, Ian, for example, he came from sort of a logistics and retail background, so which was obviously very relevant to wear cuts. We had really good discussions around that sort of thing. But then you... Then I was dealing with someone like Darren Sutton, who I'm not sure Paz, you might have to nod or, yeah, yeah, he is part of it again. Um, I was speaking to him about sort of business purpose and dealing with customers and having those conversations with customers and various stakeholders and all, and all sort of things like that. So, yeah, just if you are allocated a certain coach, don't think that that's your only resource that's available to you. You can still uh, speak with other coaches one other thing that I found super valuable um, throughout the course, um, and this is particularly important as a solo founder, um, was that you're part of this group of other founders and you're not on your own. You can share the pains of having a startup and the problems that you experience with those other founders. Um, as I mentioned, as a solo founder, that's really, really was quite useful to me as well. When you are a solo founder, you sort of feel that no one understands what you're sort of going through. No one can really um, sympathise or have empathy towards you because they don't understand. But when you're going through Launch Hub with a bunch of other people that are getting into it as well, with their solving their own big problems, there's that sort of camaraderie which you can't really find anywhere else. So that was another, another huge, huge advantage. Um, one of the great outcomes um, in the case of Aircut, and I think things might have changed um, now, was there at the very end of it, once you've gone through the program and the, the coaches are really happy with your progress, um, you get the opportunity to pitch for some funding. Um, and that was not just great in terms of the funding itself, the cold hard cash, but in terms of the actual process that you go through, because you start designing things like your pitch deck, you start practicing what it is that you're going to say, you start practicing how you're going to phrase it. And it really, um, it really is a good chance to really reflect on your time throughout the program as well and rephrase and remind yourself what you, how you went into the program and what the business was looking like. And then 
over the course of the program how things had changed and what the actual end outcome actually is. In, for our cart, that was a slight uh, change in the actual value proposition and seeing some uh, traction as well in terms of customer numbers and things like that and partnerships and things like that. So it gives you a good opportunity to stop, have a look around and revitalize yourself and understand how much progress you've actually made throughout the program. Um, so for all those reasons, I really do have to recommend it. Um, I think for me, again, for me personally, the timing of it was really suited to, to my needs. Um, if I'm being completely honest, I wouldn't have applied again if uh, I'd got rejected a third time or whatever, um, just because I was in my last sort of semester of studies um, and realised that, you know, if I didn't get it this time, I would just have to keep on going throughout the, the journey of being a startup founder. Um, so if it is available to you, um, I highly recommend that you actually go through and go through the process. Um, so on that sort of note, is there any, does anyone have any questions about the actual process or my experience with it or even about Aircart or anything like that that I can, that I can answer? Mm. Yeah, thanks for that, Haddon. I think, um, you know, it's really great to have your perspective of what it was like for you to actually go through the program itself. Um, so I really appreciate you sharing that as well. And, and yeah, might just echo what Haddon said of if there are any questions um, for either Haddon or myself, um, perhaps we can just post them into um, the chat here and go through any, um, any specific questions. Um, but Haddon, yeah, I just had one question of, um, now that you're, you've been a, um, a Launch Hub alumni, like where is our air cart at now? Yeah, um, well, we've, we've uh, made a lot of progress. Um, our current stage is that we're dealing with all of the retailers at the moment. So uh, these are retailers that in total have something like $120 billion in, in annual recurring revenue. So we're in discussions with them um, about the services we can provide in what is essentially a more cost efficient and convenient way to fulfill e-commerce grocery orders or mm -hmm. Um, bring their stores online um, and those conversations have been really promising so far um, as we're doing that we're also in the process of raising uh, what you might just decide to call a seed round um, so we're in discussions with a variety of uh, potential investors and people in the know around that so that's also very exciting um, so yeah there's quite a lot there's a lot going on um, uh, if you've got a startup you'll 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 realise that there's a lot that goes on uh, if you haven't already figured that out. But, um, yeah, it's, it's been interesting having the discussions with the retailers. It's, um, uh, it's really proven a point from their perspective of how valuable um, a service or solution like Aircart is. Um, but also it's provided a bit more clarification on what Aircart actually is. Uh, one of the things that I knew from the very early days was that Aircart was going to, have elements of a SaaS business, a software as a service business, uh, particularly in relation to the retailers. Um, but um, through the discussions that we've had with retailers, one of them already has essentially said, yeah, we would like you guys just to do the entire e-commerce sort of stuff for us so that we don't have to. Um, yeah. Again, I knew it was gonna happen eventually, but I didn't realize it was gonna be happening so soon. So mm. yeah, that sort of gives you a bit more of an understanding about uh, where things are at. but. Um, that's just the surface. There's so much more going on that it's absolutely insane. Um, but it's enjoyable. It's all part of the part of the process. Has yeah, yeah. No, I can imagine. Um, no, thanks for sharing all of that. And I was even just reflecting on you know all of last year when COVID hit. How you know how that just showed how valuable as well your service is. So no, I really really appreciate that. Yeah, one of the one of the things that people often say is, "Oh, it's such good, you know, such a reactive thing to do, you know, start a grocery delivery uh, business uh, because of COVID." And I'm always like, "Oh no, it actually started just like just before, a few weeks before." So people are always quite shocked about that. So the mm. time is a bit crazy. I know. Well, thanks, Adam. We might um we might pause there, and I might just give everyone just about a minute or so and we'll put on some tunes and I would just love everyone to um, post at least one or two questions in the chat either for I've myself got, or, or yeah, have it. I've, I've got a question here from Aurel is that oh amazing yeah definitely yeah, um, 
so the question here that I've got is a direct message. Um, why do you think you were not selected the first time? Um, it was such a long time ago now, I can hardly even remember. I just think um, it was primarily the way that I, I sort of phrase the problems that Eckhart was solving. Um, I think when I sort of discussed the problems that Eckhart was solving, I, I was quite technical in how I described them. I was talking like saying things like hyperlocal delivery, like on demand and logistical terms that no one really understood. So one thing that I had to learn was how to speak like a normal sort of person that wasn't coming from a logistics or transport and e-commerce background. Um, when I started doing that more, I found that people could actually understand what I was saying. Um, so that's probably a little bit of a tip when you're um, talking about the problem that you're trying to solve, try not to talk in a very technical way. You've got to talk in sort of layman's terms and not overcomplicate things because the person that you're trying to uh, talk to might come from a completely different background as you and might not have the same experience or work history that you've got. So that's just one thing to keep in mind, keep things like as simple and as clear as possible. And also don't just talk about the problem in that way, talk about your solution in that way as well. Yeah, well said. And I can also expand of, um, it really depends on, yeah, the this, this stage and also the types of applications of, yeah, how well it is articulated of um, what you're trying to solve, what the solution is, why you're best placed to solve that and how you're going to do it. Um, so, yeah, I definitely echo that as well, Haddon. And I'm glad you were so persistent as well. Um, and I can see there's another chat here, a question here um, about how many participants teams will be selected. Um, so we'll be um, accepting nine um, to or 12, nine to 12 um, teams or founders. So we accept both um, teams or solo founders as well from both RMIT and um, non RMIT, and then we ensure that we're, you know, selecting a, di a di diverse cohort as well. So um, we always keep that in in mind. But yeah, thanks for the question, Aurel. Um, and were there any other questions um, from anyone? We've got some time now. Um, if we want to dive into anything, so perhaps if um, if you want to unmute or just post something in the chat, I'll um, yeah. Just put on some music and we can um, dive through anything else. Just quickly, Paz, one thing that I will also just mention because I completely forgot about saying it before, one of the huge benefits of the program is the weekly accountability sessions. I really found that those, um, those really just help keep, keep the progress going with Aircart. Um, if you can set up key metrics that you want your startup to be keeping an eye on, whether that be growth in customers or um, part, number of partnerships uh, captured you know, or required for your business, then yeah, those weekly metrics and that accountability of your coaches really helps, helps with that. Mm. Yeah, definitely. And we'll be, um, yeah, we'll be running those on Zoom for um, some of the weeks and then weeks four and eight, we'll, they'll be in person and we'll have, you know, like an actual, well, you know, obviously restrictions permitting um, whatever the future may hold um, but yeah being able to meet in person and, and do that will be um, yeah a really nice element. But yeah, I was going to ask if um, it was all going to be held online this this cohort as well but um, mm. with, I think with um, my cohort I think it was number seven um, it was yeah. the very first uh, very first cohort to go all online um, and a lot of people whinge about that, but I actually found it quite useful because I could be in a in a lecture or a tutorial and then just instantly switch out into into launch up really easily. It was just a click mm. instead of having to jump on a tram or go for a walk and get on a train or something like that. So it can be phrased as a very good thing, this whole online thing. Definitely. Yeah. And that's why we wanted to bring, you know, some of the best parts online and then still have those in-person elements mm. for the connection and um, also just motivation as well. Mm. So, well, if we don't have any more questions, um, I'll, I'll carry on through um, to the next one. Oh, I just saw one come through. So can we apply if we are at the idea stage and we don't have the technical skills to build, for example, an app? So 
Um, Nicole, thanks for the question. So if you are at idea stage, you're welcome to still apply and we'll read your application and can recommend perhaps the best way forward. But if you're at idea stage, um, I would recommend perhaps applying for Activator Connect. Um, I'll post the link in the chat um, towards the end, um, but we offer Activator Connect for those who have an idea and so they're not quite um, ready yet for Launch Hub. And so we have Activator Connect, which is our six month um, membership to join the Activator community. And it's a free membership for RMIT and non-RMIT idea stage founders. Um, we do also accept like fully fledged businesses in Activator Connect um, because you join our community, you can come to events, there's a resource library, um, you can jump on the Slack channel and we can connect you in uh, with other members. And this is just to get a feel for what Activate is about and, and how we support people. And then um, we can actually deep dive and, and understand, okay, where are you at? What do you need help with? And then is Launch Hub for you? Or do, um, do we have something else at this stage? So it's hard for me to know exactly what stage you're at um, uh, at the moment, but if you're saying idea stage, then I would probably should suggest Activate Connect. Um, but you're welcome to apply for Launch Hub um, and then we can really understand and actually read and then have a better recommendation for you. So I think, Paz, if you don't mind me just jumping in here quickly. Yeah, jump in. I think, um, I think you guys should all see like an MVP, a minimum viable product, as like a hurdle entry requirement of getting into, um, getting into Launch Hub. Um, the reason why I say that is having an MVP at least shows to other people you've actually got some kind of level of commitment to actually getting something going instead of just thinking about an idea. And it doesn't have to be an expensive one. I mean, uh, expensive sort of first version MVP. My very first version of Aircart was literally like a $10 website and that's, that's all it needed to be. Um, Obviously, it might differ on what your business is and how it works and all that sort of stuff. But um, I found that, you know, just a basic, basic website got the job done that allowed customers to order their groceries um, and get them delivered. So you don't have to, when you're thinking of your very first version of whatever your business is, it doesn't have to be this huge, big, big, massive goliath of a thing. It can literally just be a website. I mean, Aircart's actually quite a complex business. And there's an unimaginable amount of money that could be sunk into actually building the product. But $20 is all that it cost me to get started, plus $180 to cover the very first customer's order. Um, so when you're starting out, you don't have to have to think big, just think small, just think mm -hmm. basic value proposition and get started from there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really good point. Um, awesome. And so, and a question from Jess. So are the coaches already engaged with Activator or do you bring in new coaches to fit the founder's area of interest? Yeah, so um, we have our three coaches who are already um, with us for the next Launch Hub program. And so uh, each team, as I mentioned, would be assigned based, with, based on the coaches and the uh, participants' interests. So we have Ian, Wong, um, Shamila and Darren as the coaches for the next program. And then in regards to you know, do we bring in new coaches to fit the founders' areas of interest? We don't bring in any um, extra coaches to meet one-on-one -on -one with throughout the program apart from those three. But what we, um, what tends to happen is in stand-ups when uh, you're talking about either like who you're trying to connect with, we leverage the, you know, we can call it the brain's trust of the group in a stand-up and see if there are other connections we can make or if there's someone in the Activator community, we can make an introduction to. We always look out for that as well. But um, does that answer your question, Jess? Let me know if um, in the chat if you want me to expand on anything there. Or Harden, if you wanted to add anything on coaches and connections. Yeah, just I've, I've got a direct message here from Arel, actually. That's, um, that's a question. Are one to two key members, team members, allowed to enrol um, in addition to the founder? As you might be more suited to actually answer that one. Can you repeat the question, sorry? Are uh, one to two key team members allowed to enroll slash attend 
launch up in addition to the founder? Yes. So the minimum requirement is that at least one founder is attending all sessions throughout the program. Um, but if you're applying and there's four of you in a team, um, all four of you can come to stand up. All four of you can come to the growth session. And we actually encourage that. We encourage the whole team um, to come if that's suitable um, as well. But the minimum requirement is, yeah, one person from the team is showing up every week to the stand up and the growth session and the one-on-one -on -one coaching. That's like the minimum commitment. Um, yeah. So yeah, you can enroll for sure. Um, awesome. I can see Siddhant's question. So I have a landing page and prototype for my idea. Am I working and I'm working on an MVP at the moment. Is this a good stage for me to apply? Um, yes, I think it's definitely a good stage for you to apply. I mean, like I said, again, I can't obviously get a clear snapshot of exactly what stage you're at, um, but I would definitely apply because the questions on the application really like elicit the information that we need to know to be able to understand where you're at and how we can support you. Um, and um, I'm not sure, Haddon, if you want to elaborate on anything on that as well. Um, yeah, like I said before, preferably before you apply, make sure you've got an MVP or something at least working or at least you're working on something. Um, yeah, it just it just proves that you are relatively serious about what it is that you're doing. Um, you've got some sort of thought behind it and you're actually taking active steps to actually solving the problem that you're actually trying to solve. Um, and yeah, it, it just looks a lot better. If you then if you just rock up and talking about an idea, because when you get stuck in that stage of just thinking about ideas, that that period can actually last a long, long time. Um, whereas if you're actively making steps, that actually shows that to people that yeah, you, you're actually going out there and being active more or less. Nice, awesome, cool. Well, I think that brings us to the end of the Q and A. If there was anything else, feel free to pop them in if we if we missed anything. Um, but I will wrap up here at the end just with a few more things before we finish. Um, but yeah, Haddon, once again, really thank you for, you know, jumping in and sharing your experience and, um, and answering the questions as well. And for the final um, element, if you haven't already joined our community newsletter, um, this is just a really great way to just stay up to date with um, what we're running and what we're doing at Activator as well. So feel free to scan this QR code um, to understand, yeah, if, if you wanted to stay in the loop on the general Activator news. Um, and if the time's right, apply for Launch Hub. So um, you can scan this QR code for the direct link to the website. Otherwise, um, I'm, otherwise I'll pop the link in here in the chat as well for um, the website launch hub page. And I will just recommend, um, I'll pop in the link here. And so I will just recommend um, have a really good read of the website before you apply. There's a whole FAQ section as well that details a lot of information. You'd be surprised how many applications we get that haven't clearly gone through all of that. Um, you know, feel free to, uh, really, yeah, take that apart. And um, if it's more helpful, copy the questions in the application, draft it up in a Google in a Google Doc to really understand, um, you know, flesh out those clear answers, and then copy them across into the application page. So applications are due Sunday, eleventh of April. So you've got all of Easter to just dive in um, and apply. And if you have any other questions as well, um, you know, feel free to reach out but that really brings us to the end of today so i just wanted to thank you all for coming along and as well Haddon, for joining us today as well it's been great to yeah hear more about where you're at as well so thank you everyone um, i hope you all have a lovely day and enjoy the rest of your session we'll um we'll email the recording through if you wanted to deep dive and look at it again so thank you everyone have a beautiful day feel free to unmute and say goodbye Thanks, Paz. Good luck, everyone. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Bye. All the Good best. luck. Bye. Looking forward to reading the applications. See ya. See you, everyone.